It's Labor Day, September 7th, 2020, and it's that time of year again. Uh, it's time to spread rye. If you listen to some of my earlier videos, I talked about uh, my food plot design and what I was putting in this year. Uh, earlier, at the beginning of August, I put in winter peas and crimson, crimson clover mix. Uh, we've had enough rain to get it going, but we've had periods of times where you know it, did, it just didn't rain enough. And I'm a little worried about that, but hopefully winter will ride to the rescue again. Uh, a couple days ago, I put down 100 pounds and I need to finish today. And we're talking about winter rye grain and how it rules and saves the day. So a couple tips that I want to go over with because it's that time of year and you're, you're not late. This is just the beginning of what I call winter rye season. Uh, the first tip is plant Labor Day to October 1st. Now, as you get closer to October, you have to keep in mind, you don't want to pressure the land and you don't want to spook deer out. So try to get it in before October 1st, depending on when you want to start hunting your land. Uh, my property here specifically, I really don't do anything with it until act, hunt till after October 20th. Okay, so plant Labor Day to October 1st. I'm going to get my planting in today. I'll, I'll have 200 pounds down in an area that's about three quarters of an acre. And I've said earlier in another video that I do about 200 pounds, uh, 200 to 300 pounds per acre of broadcasting the seed. Now, I may come back before October 1st, depending on how it's growing, depending how much rain we get. I may put down another 100 pounds over the whole thing. It just depends. I play it by ear. I try to uh, intrude as little as possible on the property stay out as much as possible but i want to get that planting in i want that green food source through uh springtime starting in october through springtime this stuff will grow quickly especially if we get the rain a uh, second thing i have on my board here is broadcast on open soil or on uh sprayed or on a sprayed area okay what i did was i planted the winter peas and the crimson clover i tilled the soil this time because there were areas i had to open up that were fresh that I've never planted before. Uh, I'm going to attempt a no-till method next year, and there'll be more on that as the spring comes in the following year, but I tilled the area and I put down the peas, I put down the crimson clover, and I cold packed it. There's a lot of open soil. The deer are hitting it. You can see it's browsed down pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of open soil, and I will broadcast right into that open soil on top of that previous planting. If you didn't plant anything, if your soil was poor, and you want to get something in there green. Winter rye is the right choice. Uh, the key is to broadcast it in an area that you had sprayed at least two weeks before you plan to broadcast. You want to be able to open up that soil because when you spray stuff with glyphosate or Roundup, uh, it'll kill it off, it'll, it'll dry up, and there should be some exposed soil, all right? Uh, and, then, and then you can broadcast right into that. I'd say at least two weeks. Uh, I can also offer another idea. If you want, if you know you're going to put winter rye in, I'd start at the end of July, spray at the end of July, kill it off, and then uh, look at it once again, right when you're going to plant around Labor Day. And if you have to spray again, you spray again at the same time you plant. It won't hurt the seed because uh, glyphosate is inert when it's on plain seed or, or just soil. It has to hit something green, something leafy, and it'll absorb and that's what kills the plant. Okay, so broadcast on open soil or spray or on a sprayed area. And the last tip I want to add is uh, winter rye is so significant because it's green from fall until spring. You'll always have a green food source for deer, especially when, you know, winter rolls around. You, you know, they'll dig in the snow, they'll go down into it and that winter rye will last. Uh, it's great on low pH soil. When I first did my soil test on my property here, the pH was 5.3, okay? It, it wasn't good. It wasn't good for a lot of these other crops. So I've limed since then, but my first crops were winter rye and winter rye did well. And shade tolerant, winter rye is shade tolerant. You can plant that in an area that doesn't get a lot of sunlight and it will grow and you will have success with it. And it's very browse tolerant, the deer will We'll browse on it, browse on it, browse on it. And typically, if we get a little bit warm ups, sometimes we get these warm ups in December, even November, November, December, January, we might go up into the 50s, we might go into the 60s. If it does that for a few days, that will trigger some growth in the winter rye. 
this stuff is 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 amazing and it's it's a food pot plot savior that's why i've entitled this winter rye grain rules it rules all the time it'll always get the job done all you need is moisture and as we go through the fall typically dew points are higher temperatures drop lower in the night and you have more humidity and you have more moisture on the ground you get that dew on the soil that will help this stuff grow you don't even need a lot of significant rain you just need to get some moisture in the mornings once the moisture gets on this seed it'll start to sprout so good luck it's getting close september 7th i can't wait i get excited uh hope all of you are out there whether you're hunting on your own property whether whether you're hunting on public land which i hunt a lot on actually the last several years i've killed my bucks on on public land and good luck and you know be a good steward to to wildlife be a good steward to deer hunting and uh take a kid hunting and help them find success and contribute to the promotion of uh, our great sport in the outdoors and that's hunting good luck